And we're here at the Bonnie Carey Spillway. This, uh, it was closed three days ago. Uh, this is the first time it's been open this early uh, in the winter, I believe since 1937. The last January opening was 1937. But this really all began back in 2008 when they opened it uh, for, the, for the first time in probably 10 years. Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries were actually gill netting above the structure just to see if there was a potential that pallid sturgeon could be near the structure when they open it. And they did catch a pallid sturgeon and they alerted us and we began to work with the New Orleans District on uh, some possible rescue of pallid sturgeon after the 2008 opening. Uh, and they agreed and we came here as a group uh, ourselves, the Engineer Research and Development Center, Environmental Lab, uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, and began to sample there in Bar -Bar a Barber's Canal using electroshocking and gill netting. And within probably 15 or 20 minutes, uh, they were bringing in a pallid sturgeon. Uh, that began then our routine for the next couple of weeks of coming out capturing pallid sturgeon, uh, tagging them, and then releasing them back into the Mississippi River. And the Corps done this for three consecutive openings of the spillway now, <clears throat> and um, they've done a great job. They've returned a number of sturgeon during those spring high water years the previous two times. Uh, there's also the shovel nose sturgeon that's out here. It is not an endangered species. It's very abundant but it's hard to tell from pallid sturgeon. So they've been protected under the Endangered Species Act due to their similarity of appearance to pallid sturgeon. So actually the, both species are listed under the Endangered Species Act. Um, but only the pallid sturgeon is very rare. The Bonacary Spillway project began on May 15, 1928, so it's approaching 88 years old. And uh, during that course, it's had 11 openings. The most recent uh, just ended this past Monday. The structure itself is 7,700 feet long. It has 350 bays, each of which has 20 wooden removable needles that can be uh, lifted up and allowed water to pass through the structure uh, six miles towards Lake Pontchartrain. In summer of 2011, when the Bonnie Carey was opened during the flood of the century, uh, we were here rescuing paddlefish, uh, pallet sturgeon, and returning them to the river. We caught one paddlefish uh, that we had tagged. We had released it here behind the structure. We recaptured it shortly afterwards and then placed it back in the river. It had been pretty well uh, beaten up. It had a rough, tri rough trip through the structure, uh, but we thought it would survive, so we let it go. While paddle fishing uh, for caviar, uh, south of Greenville, I was catching a good many paddlefish, and on, I think on my last set, I picked the net up and ran down, picked out several paddlefish, and then came across one that I noticed was a little bit different. Had a, actually had a spaghetti tag on it, and uh, of course I was familiar with the uh, with the tags and the way they way they look, core engineer tags, and. Um, so I said, well, that, I don't know where it came from, but I'll go ahead and remove the tag. And uh, the fish was in good shape. Uh, I had no need to keep it, so I took the tag off and released it. And uh, after later finding out uh, the tag was actually uh, a fish that we had tagged here on Bonnie Carey Spillway, which was I knew was highly unusual. It, you know, it would be of interest to, to a lot of people. The recapture of that fish is important for, for two reasons. One is academic, in that we were able to uh, calculate how fast the fish moved upriver, compare that to water velocities in the river, and just from a fish biology standpoint, we now know what the swimming speeds of adult paddlefish are in a rivering environment. The more practical reason uh, that this was an important uh, uh, event was that 
that it showed that fish that we recapture and place back in the river have a very good chance of survival, resuming a new normal life, and actually uh, restoring themselves to, uh, to health after they've, they've been here in a fairly stressful environment. And so it, it really provided an important justification for us to be out here capturing pallid sturgeon because the pallid sturgeon are smaller. They come through the structure much more easily. They're, they're, they're not as beat up. And if, if this paddlefish can uh, survive and make a normal run upriver, then we're confident that the pallid sturgeon can too. Uh, we're also uh, tagging Asian carp and putting them actually back into the spillway. And we will follow that up later on with some sampling in Lake Pontchartrain and in, uh, near the mouth of the Pearl to see if, uh, if we can document uh, carp being entrained through the Bonnie Carey ending up in the Pearl River because just this last year uh, it was documented that, that silver carp and big head carp are now in the Pearl River. This past year in October we were able to catch eight silver carp and one big head carp in the lower Pearl River so we tried to initiate this tagging process this year to take advantage of uh, movement of those fish throughout the system to see uh, which coastal rivers they may show up in next and this gives us a chance to kind of look at growth, movement patterns and um, um, uh, the ability of those guys to survive the passage through the Pontchartrain and into the coastal rivers. If their population continues um, on the trajectory that we've seen in the Mississippi Basin, when, once they're introduced, population numbers continue to grow and then that's competition with native fishes. So we came uh, thinking that we were going to be catching pallid sturgeon, but it was, it's, so far it's been very, very different than the, uh, the summer openings that have occurred previously. The water temperature is 45 degrees and it appears that the sturgeon were not near the structure when it was open. Uh, typically during the cold winter season, sturgeon will move into deeper water near the channel and they don't move as much. They don't, uh, they're not foraging uh, as aggressively as they do once the water temperature uh, gets into the 50s and 60s. And so indeed, that may be the case here. So this year we had a record high flow during the winter time. And uh, so we came out to salvage sturgeon to put them back in the Mississippi River. But what's really interesting this time is we're not finding any sturgeon, which is a great thing. Because um, we don't want them to get stranded out here. They can't get back in once the river goes down. Sampling over the past three weeks since the structure was closed, failed to collect any sturgeon. We also noticed that catfish were relatively absent from the collections. So it appears then that the opening of the Bonnie Carey spillway during the winter results in minimal entrainment risk for endangered sturgeon. However, we can never say that sturgeon will not be entrained during cold water openings. Uh, spillway water bodies are vast in number and acreage. There's a, always a possibility that either pallid or shovelnose sturgeon are trapped either in the lakes or along the stilling basin. But after sampling three opening events, we can now develop specific guidelines on recovery efforts. These guidelines will be considered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service when issuing biological opinions on the pallid sturgeon relative to future openings of the Bonnie Carey. To me, this is a win-win situation for the Corps, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the public. It's not a matter of if the Bonnie Carey will be open again, but rather when. It appears that the frequency of openings is increasing over the past eight years, suggesting that we will be back soon rescuing pallid sturgeon and releasing them back into the Mississippi River from where they came.